so much so that for the past several weeks, we've seen arbitrage happening on the Shanghai Gold Exchange, where silver has been priced as much as three bucks higher, where the traders in the West are incentivized to accumulate in, in on the COMEX and the LBMA and deliver in London or in Shanghai. And the same thing with gold, 50, 60, 70 bucks higher. It's been higher. It's been a little lower, but enough to arbitrage to incentivize these traders who have access to all three markets to deliver in the West or excuse me, purchase in the West and deliver in the East. To me, that is what's putting a floor be underneath it because the public in this country, as Rick Rule says, one half of 1% allocation from Joe and Jane six pack to the Harvard Endowment Fund. But I will tell you in my mind, they, the participation is as low as I've seen in the better part of four years, it's going unnoticed. And that is to me, a incredibly solid and strong contrarian indicator um, that, that, you know, once the American public wakes up and starts really jumping in, as I expect them to do so, because I don't see smooth sailing between now and November. I don't think most people do who watch your channel. And uh, I, all I would say is that the probability of seeing an interest level increased by the American public in the next several months to me is fairly substantial. And as that happens, we already see strength. What happens when you know, maybe that number goes to 2% allocation, a fourfold increase, or heaven forbid, a 5% allocation, as most financial advisors, I think, would say, which is woefully un uh, you know, under allocated, in my opinion. But that's a tenfold increase. And that demand should and probably will have a significant impact on, on the price of gold, as tight as it is already, without any U.S. participation. Yeah, no, that would set things into orbit, at least I would assume so. Um... But and it's an interesting point here, I think, and I don't really, I'm trying to work this out. And this is maybe perhaps a rhetorical question, but I'd like to, to ask you it. So it seems, well, I think it doesn't seem, I think it's a fact that gold and silver are shifting from West to East. What are the implications of that? Because I don't think that's been thought through enough. And it's a huge implication, right? So in your mind, yeah, tell me your opinion. Well, I mean, first of all, let's look at, at silver first, right? So, you know, everyone talks about gold, but silver, it's huge. I mean, India bought 400 million ounces of silver in the last two years. And, and that's about almost exactly the amount of silver that's been bled off of the Comex over the last two years. Now, I'm not saying it's it's tit for tat. But what I am saying is a good portion of the silver that left the COMEX has found its way into India. It's in India. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, when you realize that India bought 3,625 tons of silver last year, by far the largest importer in the world, so far this year, just in January and February, those are the only numbers we have. Those numbers are up 260%. In February, to a record high, they've already imported 2,932 tons this year, and they bought 3,600 last year, this year. And, and that's just for the first couple of months that we have records of. And so, I, you know, there's a group in Canada right now of mining executives and business insiders that are lobbying, you know, the government in Ottawa to change um, silver from an industrial metal to a strategic metal, to a metal that yeah. is needed in so many areas, not just green and digital, but also military. In so many ways, the, 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 the need for silver is strategic. And, and so they are lobbying the government in, in that respect. So when you talk about what silver represents, it's a strategic metal that anything that is electronic or digital or green that conducts electricity, just about all of it. I mean, copper is there in some of it, nowhere near as good as silver, but silver is predominantly in just about anything that conducts electricity. And, you know, I, I gave a speech two years ago at Jay Martin's uh, conference, Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, and it's one of my favorite conferences. I go every year. Conference. Yeah, it's great. And um, actually, I'm on with Jay later today, and, and I suggest everyone check out what he has to say and, and his conference. But anyways, in the conference, I talked about the military industrial com uh, complex. This was two years ago. And I talked about 500 ounces of silver in the tip of a Tomahawk's cruise missile. This guy comes up to me, gives me this cup. Uh, he says, you know, awesome. I'm this cup this year. But last year he came up to me and he said, I, I'm, I work as a consultant for the DOD. And, and, and 
Um, you know, my baby was the Patriot missile program. I'm not sure about those numbers, but I'll, I'll check. And we talked for a while and that was it. I forgot about him. Well, he met me in Vancouver this year. He was there. He came and talked to me after the show. And in it, he, he said to me, you were right. I'll be damned. You know, there's about five, four to five hundred ounces between 15 and 16 kilos of silver in the tip of a Tomahawk cruise missile. And the reason I bring this up is that the Silver Institute omits any aerospace and any military applications in their numbers that showed a 185 million ounce shortfall again last year. And the question is, why do they omit them? Um, and if this gentleman who helped design, he said, everything I'm telling you is declassified, so it's okay. And he says, if if this guy designed the Patriot missile, and he would show me all sorts of pictures on how they had it on a platform off the Gulf of California, how they were trying to get it to take off vertically rather than horizontally out of a, 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 a torpedo tube, and they had problems with the guidance. And we talked for a while, and, and he said, I'll be damned, you're right. Well, if there's that much silver in one Tomahawk cruise missile, how about all the missiles? And all the aerospace, the high-tech weaponry that we see being manufactured and being used and, and, and sent off all around the world, whether it be to the Ukraine or the Middle East or wherever it is, to the point where now, you know, we're being told, um, the military is telling Congress that we have a shortfall in our own munitions and we need mi billions of dollars more for our own. But if silver really is involved in this, you have to ask yourself, maybe this explains why, maybe, again, there's a fine line between conspiracy and reality, but Maybe this explains why you have a couple of commercial banks that would be short, naked, naked short, the right. largest concentrated short position in any commodity traded on the Comex ever. Why yeah. silver? This tiny little market, why be naked short silver? Why hold it down for so long, so counterintuitively? And why does India say, thank you very much for controlling the paper price? We would like to stand for delivery for, you know, 400 million ounces over the last two years. And you add in these numbers, you're getting up to you know, half a billion ounces that they've accumulated. Why? Is there something hidden in all of this? And I would say, you know, again, you know, what does logic have to say? What does Occam's razor have to say? Now, when we talk about gold, it's a different story. Um, gold was reclassified in 2019 by the BIS, the Bank of International Settlements, as the world's only other tier one reserve asset. And it is considered a riskless asset. In fact, I'd like to read to you yeah, please. Something here real quick. And this is from the International Monetary Fund. And, you know, the IMF is the Western version of of kind of kind of the Western version of. Um, well, they're a Western friendly entity. It's about 150 countries that was actually developed at the Bretton Woods Conference in, in 1944, I want to say, in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. And, and uh, the the. Um, the IMF has been kind of integral in a lot of the ways that I have formulated my, my thought process. In 2020, there was a report on their website saying that all of these countries that represent the IMF, the majority of them are saying, we want a new Bretton Woods. We want a new system, uh, a, a new system because this one's broken. So listen to, and, and before I read this, Kristalina Georgieva, the head of the IMF, came out just a few months ago and said any central bank digital currency that is ever issued, if it's not pegged to something, will just be more fiat. Well, what is gold, according to the BIS? The only other tier one asset. Who's been buying all the gold over the last three years? Oh, yeah, the central banks have been Such buying banks. more than any time in central bank history. Yeah. So listen to the way that the central or the IMF, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, classifies gold. And it says gold as per International Monetary Fund is the only universally accepted financial asset that is not someone else's liability. From the IMF, financial assets are economic assets that are financial instruments. Financial assets include claims and, by convention, monetary gold held in the form of gold bullion. A financial claim is a financial instrument that has a counterparty liability. Gold bullion is not a claim and does not have a corresponding liability. It is treated as a financial asset, however, because of its special role as a means of financial exchange and international payments by monetary authorities and as a reserve asset held by monetary authorities. In other words, they're saying there is no claim against it. It has no counterparty liability, but yet it's a financial asset. Do you think there's any reason why Kristalina Georgieva would say that? Why the BIS reclassified gold? Why the central banks are not only 
draining the exchanges and repatriating their gold from the Bank of England and the New York Fed, which, by the way, the New York Fed won't even answer when they are asked, and even under the Freedom of Information Act, have not answered who's been taking all their gold back. Put all these things together and you can see just how important gold really is. 